Hi everyone, it is still June 18, 2019. I read the comments below my video that I posted earlier and it's clear to me that many of you are struggling with uh, the insanity, the madness, the destruction that is taking place, life being killed off, uh, the, well, the erosion of truth the erosion of truth means life itself is eroding. I'm going to play a few minutes of G. Edward Griffin. What he has to say is really important, so I hope that you listen carefully and take seriously what he has to say. And I want to thank all the subscribers who sent along uh, this video and the next video and then I'm going to uh, well there are two subject matters but they are so related so related so I will pull it together from for you but yeah we're in trouble we are in big big trouble well, first of all, I think you summed it up very well. That is exactly what's going on, a movement for freedom. And, of course, that implies an awareness, an increasing awareness of the threat to freedom. Uh, that's kind of a new phenomenon, isn't it? Because even when we were losing our freedoms quite rapidly in the last couple of decades, it didn't feel so bad. I mean, it felt like we were totally free. And But I, I was aware that the tide was rising around us. We were standing on high ground, but I could see the, the water creeping up, you know, and it's, oh my gosh, if this keeps up, I'm going to be up to here. I'll lose my freedoms too. So that's what activated me long ago. But many people couldn't see that because they weren't monitoring it and they weren't alert to it. They couldn't imagine that that would happen. It will never happen in America, you know. Well, now the, the water's pretty high. And so people are looking around and say, oh my gosh, my feet are wet. Now my knees are wet. What are we going to do? So this is a good sign in a sense that uh, people are awake now and they're willing to talk and look and perhaps be more objective. But it's a bad sign because the water is getting pretty high. You know? mm -hmm. So it's, a, it's something I've seen coming for a long time. The, the forces of tyranny are rising. The forces of resistance to tyranny are rising. And it's coming to a head in the near future. Now, I don't know how near. I'm very bad at putting numbers, but it's certainly going to be soon. That's all yeah. I can say. So people ought to take an interest. And it's not just a matter of coming to some event mm -hmm. and listening to some guy like me talk about how bad things are and what they think. They better do more than that. They better decide how, what they're going to do about it. Mm -hmm. Because you can't depend on the government to take care of it because it, to a large degree, the government is the thing we're worried about. Mm -hmm. So we have to look to ourselves. We have to make uh, coalitions with other people of like mind. We have to sort of build our own our own resources and our own defenses. So it's not just, oh, I've got to learn more about this. It's about what am I going to do about this and who am I going to associate with so that we can combine our efforts and be effective in reversing this tide, getting that water to start going down again. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is our responsibility. It is our individual responsibility to get out there and speak the truth, protect the truth. A nation can only fall into tyrannical hands. It can only fall into a tyranny when the truth is not considered important, when the people don't consider the truth important, when lies told to the people are accepted. So it's our responsibility to protect the truth. Now, I will say that I have a different perspective of what is taking place. I will agree that there are more people who are beginning 
to wake up to some of these agendas. But I know that there are an awful lot of awake people who have turned off what is happening to us collectively and they have gone right back into their self-centered lives. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of awake who do nothing with the knowledge that they obtain. We have had a tremendous amount of information, but here we are just gathering up more and more. What G. Edward Griffin said is very important. It's not about getting more information. It's about what you're doing with the information that you already have. So I have for eight years been saying everybody needs to get involved in their community. Everybody needs to be going to their town council meetings and finding out what are those rules and regulations that your town council members are about to impose upon you. Finding out what your state government, the, the legislation, what they're about to pass, stating you cannot uh, expect any kind of you know, change from Washington, D.C. You can only expect change to occur in your own community, but that's only if you are actively involved. And very few are actively involved. So it is, if you regard the truth as important, you are not sitting back and allowing people to destroy the truth. We have watched the truth be destroyed for certainly since 9-11-2001, the radical changes that have taken place, the, the, the freedoms of ours ripped away, the radical changes should have alerted all American adults. But there are so many that, well, like the citizens of Oceana, George Orwell's novel, 1984, American citizens have become citizens of Oceana, following party line. But it's not just Americans. It's also Scots, the Irish, Welsh, Aussies, Brits. It's happening all over. And the truth is being destroyed. And when life becomes cyber life and real life is vanishing, oh, it's very easy to destroy the truth. And very, very shortly, the truth will be gone. That's coming. We will be disappeared. And we are Winston in 1984. This world, the radical changes that have taken place, well, you're going to hear the radical change right in this video. And I want to really thank the subscriber who sent this along because it's a brilliant video. 1984 comes to Scottish High School. I've been saying for eight years, we are already living 1984 and everything is only 
going to get far worse. We will be living 1984 on steroids. War is peace. Think of Obama getting that Nobel Peace Prize when he had done nothing. And then he went about killing, murdering innocent civilians in many countries with the drone strikes, killing children, the elderly, innocent people. When I tried to get that through to my liberal progressive Democrat friends, I felt like Winston. There's a reason why my uh, original channel was named Kafka Winston World. Twice that channel got terminated. Kafka Winston? I felt my life was Kafka-esque. I felt like Winston in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. Because I was just trying to have conversation with people about what was taking place in the world, in our country, certainly what was happening in the sky. And I did not understand the responses that I was getting all the time. Hostile, uh, rolling of the eyes, call to conspiracy theorists. God, you're so negative. Well, Carol, you, you bring up scary topics. But the denial that I was met with, with my so-called educated elite friends, they have no clue what elite means, but things like this. A new friend who, after she said this, I, I literally didn't know what to do, so I did nothing, and we were no longer friends. She said, well, Carol, a fact to you may not be a fact to someone else. Wow. A lot of my friends were redefining words. So I would have a conversation with a friend who was a retired professor, atheism. But she kept using her own definition of what an atheist is. And then my housemate, who never engaged in any serious conversation, but she was there, kind of uh, just sitting there listening to us. I said it three times, Mar Margo, I, how do you, I can't, we can't have this conversation. If you're going to use your own definition of what words mean. And, well, the quiet one immediately became so angry, I couldn't believe it, and said, what? Do you want to use your definition? I said, no, the definition, the, the, there's a the definition. You know, the definition in the dictionary, this, the, the, the definition. Um, we've got these standard definitions, and it helps us communicate. And if you decide for yourself what what something is, I mean, you're using your own definitions, communication breaks down, as it did in that conversation. But Marco, this retired professor, I look at her, her arms are crossed, and she's staring at me with a smirk on her face as if, see, see, you're wrong, Carol. Okay. I was out to dinner with about five people. I asked this question, and I was surprised that nobody asked me what I meant. I asked, do you use your own definitions of words? Every one of them. And the ages were like 25 to like 55. Every one of them said yes. Everyone. So, 
I was encountering something that was very unusual. The moral relativism, the deciding for one's own self, what reality is. During the Bush and Cheney years, oh boy, were we all screaming about wanting them hung for the lies they spoke. Obama comes in, and I tried to have a conversation about his lies, and I was negative. Oh God, you're so dark. Really? All I'm trying to do is point out, guess what? Obama's lying. Well, for them, Obama walked on water. Pointing out, okay, this guy gets a Nobel Peace Prize, but he's dropping bombs on innocent people. They did not care about the truth. They held the party line. They were citizens of Oceania. This video on I Hypocrite, I like that channel name. I Hypocrite, 1984, comes to Scottish High School. I'm going to play just a few minutes, but I will link below. And I hope that you watch it and circulate it because this really should scare the hell out of all of us here. There's a classic old episode of The Simpsons where Lisa raises questions in class about animal rights issues and the teacher has a button under her desk that says independent thought alarm. Uh, Miss Hoover, I don't think I can dissect an animal. I think it's wrong. Okay, Lisa. I respect your moral objection. Today a video was uploaded to the internet that's basically the real life version of that. A kid in a Scottish high school was kicked out of class for saying that there is only two genders. However, when I was watching this clip for the first time, it wasn't The Simpsons that was on my mind, but another work of fiction by a man named George Orwell. Let's take a look at this clip. Entitled to your opinion. If I am, then why would you kick me out of class? It's not very inclusive. Can I get your sentence, please? It's not very inclusive. No, I'm sorry, but you were saying it was not very inclusive, and this is an inclusive school. Yeah, how, what, how is what I was saying? I was saying that the only website is that there are more than one gender in well, this country. That's your one. opinion. It's my opinion, and that is an opinion which is acceptable in the school. I'm afraid yours which you're saying that there's no such thing as anyone other than male or female. Scientifically, there are just two genders. Okay, so this video starts after the kid has already been kicked out of the class, and I know some people struggle with the Scottish accent a little bit, but it starts off with the teacher saying, you're entitled to your opinion, and then later when the teacher says there's more than two genders, the student says that's your opinion, and this is where it's right off the bat it starts to get really chilling. He says, yeah, that's an opinion that's acceptable in the school, but your opinion is not inclusive. So you have the teacher creating a direct parallel between opinions which are inclusive and opinions which are acceptable. Depending on what I get, I get agenda you, you are choosing to make an issue of this because I said, are you really going to do it? That was your opportunity to, to, to keep quiet. You made the issue with it on the website. You said, oh, this website doesn't have more than two Murray, You were clearly given an opportunity not to pursue it. You chose to do so. Yeah, because I think it's... You silly. chose to do so. Yes, that's the key question. You chose to do so. Now, this is really interesting to me, this little brief exchange, and we can glean some information here for paying close attention to what they're saying. Because the teacher is accusing the student of having chosen to make an issue, but the student retorts by saying that it was actually the teacher who chose to make an issue by pointing out that the website only had two genders. Would I sort of extrapolate from this, and I'm speculating, so maybe I'm wrong, but it sounds like they were looking at some website and the lesson probably had nothing to do with gender but the teacher chose to take a little side trip to mention that the website only showed two genders as if that was bad and this student retorted that there is only two genders to which the teacher replied are you really going to make an issue out of this and now he's here telling the student how he gave the student the choice and this is why it reminds me of 1984 because not only is there only two genders 
years, but that is like an objective aspect of reality. It's not an opinion. <laughs> Can we start there? Can we acknowledge that saying there are only two genders is less of an opinion and more of a scientifically observable fact? Now, I'm not going to... Bada bing. There are only two genders. So how did that go viral that now we have, I don't know how many, 50? There are only two genders. You can have your opinion that there are more, but it's your opinion. The fact remains. There are two genders. Now, am I saying that? I am a hate agent. I'm a hate agent. And we'll get more into this. Facebook's process to label you a hate agent. And if you're a hate agent, then you're disappeared. The parallels between what we are living and 1984 are very real and it's going to get far worse. We will be disappeared because they want to disappear truth. So in this video here, um, where is it? What's the number I put on it? 415. It is what this teacher is doing to this student is just like what happened to Winston in 1984. You will, you will say that 2 plus 2 equals 5. And if you don't, you will be tortured. Now, this student was kicked out of class. He's not physically tortured, but he is being punished for stating a fact. And the teacher is telling him, you can't state that. Why? Because it's not policy. It's not authority. It's not the party line, like what happened to Winston. The principle of, we are going to punish you until you stop acknowledging this uncomfortable reality that we don't like. And the teacher trying to make it seem like it's the student's choice. It's the student's choice and that the teacher is forcing him to do that to himself. You can see this in the clip from the 1984 movie where the guy who's torturing Winston says that Winston at any time could have just chosen to fix the problem himself instead of letting it go to this point. You are mentally deranged. You do suffer from a defective memory. You never try to cure yourself of it because you did not choose to. It was a small effort of will which you were not ready to make. I think it's silly to have anything other than two genders. So. That, okay, anything could you please, else could you please keep that opinion to your own house? Thank you. No, not so you get to put your opinion out in class and my well, opinion. I, I am not my putting, opinion has to stay I am inside not house. putting my opinion. I am not, not putting my opinion out. I am stating what is national school authority policy. Okay? National school authority policy. This is Okay. This is life. It doesn't matter that it's happening in Scotland. It does not matter where it's going on because it's going on all over, all over. You must, you must adhere to the party, not truth, not fact, the party, the policy of the party. And we already have an awful lot of Americans who are adhering to the party. 
not truth, not fact. Countering truth decay, that's our responsibility. Truth decay, the diminishing role of facts and analysis in American public life. Drivers of truth decay. And this, this was a study of news reporting yesterday and news reporting today. And what they found was that there is a diminishing role of fact and data in American public life. The four trends that characterize truth decay, increasing disagreement about facts and analytical interpretations of facts and data. Like when my friend said, a fact to you may not be a fact to somebody else. Really? Like this authority figure uh, holding the party line. It doesn't matter what you think. It only matters that you say 2 plus 2 equals 5. And if you don't, your punishment is you get kicked out of class. Okay, a blurring of the line between opinion and fact. I was saying years ago, facts, evidence, they are soon to be obsolete. Opinion carries the day. Opinion. It's my opinion that there are many more genders. But wait, it's a fact that there's only two genders. Well, you're wrong. There are many genders. But my saying that, I'm hateful. The increasing relative volume and resulting influence of opinion and personal experience over fact. Declining trust in formally respected sources of facts. Today's level of disagreement over objective facts is a new phenomenon. It is a subjective opinion that there are more than two genders. It is objective fact that there are only two genders, male, female. Now, I am not a hateful person, and I have no, um, you, you were born a female, and you think you're a male, fine. But you do not get to rewrite fact, scientific fact. You don't get to rewrite biology just because you think that you are a male. But I'm hateful. And you do get this viral outrage in this world, social media. You know, the outpouring of hate directed at you for saying what was thoroughly understood not too long ago, or let's say you want the immigration laws to be enforced, today that means you hate brown people. And you're a hater. And the viral outrage of hate, they're the real haters spewing hate towards you calling you a hater. Okay, 1984. The literal reversing of what was understood once. Ignorance is strength. Freedom is slavery. War is peace. The main drivers of truth decay, cognitive biases, the rise of social media and other changes to the information environment, 
demands on the educational system that limit its ability to keep up with changes? Mm, I, I don't know about that, but political and social polarization, I would say that that is a result of the truth decay. It's not driving truth decay. It's the result. It's the result of, well, my opinion is just as good as fact. There is such a parallel to what we are living with 1984. But this big brother, big brother is Google, is Facebook, is Twitter, is Instagram, and they are disappearing truth. And they are calling truth hate. So this document, which was entitled Hate Agent Policy Review, Facebook monitors the offline behavior of its users to determine if they should be characterized as hate agents. Um, and the monitors, their review determines, well, this hate agent policy review helps the monitors determine if somebody ought to be characterized as a hate agent and banned from the platform. It includes a wide range of on and off platform behavior. Does that mean behavior when you're not on the computer or your smartphone? And Because we know the surveillance is operating already all over. What you're saying in your home, what you're doing and saying at work, on the street, in stores. Yeah. Or does it mean that when you are no longer logged into Facebook. They are watching everything that you do online, but offline from Facebook. Well, does it matter? No, it doesn't. What, what matters is that it is Big Brother watching you. So, if you praise the wrong individual, interview them, or appear at events alongside them, wow, so that does mean off, offline. That means they're monitoring what you're doing in your life. You go to an event and Facebook monitors know that? 1984. So Facebook may characterize, characterize, you as a hate agent. But you will also be identified as a hate agent if you self-identify with or advocate for a designated hateful ideology. Well, I'm a hate agent because I say we should be following our immigration laws. I say enforce those laws. I'm a hate agent. I say there are two genders. I'm a hate agent. This is what we are living. It's not coming. We're living it already. If you associate with the designated hate entity, one of the examples cited by Facebook as a hate entity Tommy Robinson. If you have tattoos of hate symbols or hate slogans, uh, <laughs> a cartoon frog, Peppy, that frog, the OK hand sign, and that is coming from the Anti-Defamation League. Yeah, they have an awful lot of symbols that are hate symbols. Hate on display. Hate symbols. And it appears to be true. The OK hand gesture, gesture is considered a hate symbol now. If we can't get people to 
regard the truth as important. We will all be disappeared. And yeah, you, know, you look at the headlines. Facebook <laughs> accidentally put hidden messages like Big Brother is watching and the Masons were here in tens of thousands of VR controllers, which I don't know exactly what they are, but I guess virtual reality. Okay. Hidden messages, Big Brother is watching. Facebook is Big Brother. A whole lot of people don't know that. Okay. Um, I, A, can hate with no human input. What is this hate? Everybody is called a hater if they don't agree with your subjective opinion and feel objective fact is very important. You're a hater. You are a hater. But it's all about the party line. You adhere to the party line, and well, you are, you won't be disappeared. You go against the party line, like this student in Scotland, you'll be disappeared. And when real life goes away, and it then becomes cyber life. All of it is really easy to do. Really easy to do. Um, I just want to play a few minutes of this video, which is Two Minutes of Hate, 1984. And what this really, it's like a, okay, if you've read 1984, I don't have to explain this to you, but if you haven't, no one in the audience, no one had to scream hate, but most join in. They're whipped up into a frenzy. It's like a contagious disease. Um, that's what's happening on social media. People get whipped up into a frenzy of hate while they attack who they call the hater. So when Emmanuel Goldstein comes on the screen, he's propped up as an enemy of the people. Goldstein was actually a high party figure in Oceania, but then he became a revolutionary and then he started to advocate for true freedom, genuine freedom. An enemy of the people? Freedom is slavery. And ignorance is strength. That's what we are experiencing with our own citizens. We speak the truth. And they hate us for it. We want freedom for everyone, but they hate us for it. And all of this has happened very, very quickly, very quickly. So here is just a, a little, look, the book is so much better than the film. But the film, you can watch it on YouTube. Here he is denouncing dictatorship um, and advocating for freedom. And people are whipped up into a frenzy of hate. Fighting against the mutilation of our hopes and dreams. Who are they? They are the dark armies. The dark murdering armies of Eurasia. 
in the barren deserts of Africa and India, on the oceans of Australasia, courage, strength and youth are sacrificed. Sacrificed to barbarians whose only honor is atrocity. They lie to the people of Oceania. They whip them up into a frenzy of hate for whomever they so choose is the enemy. We now are the enemy. But even as we grasp at victory, there is a cancer, an evil tumor growing, spreading in our midst. Shout! Shout! Shout out his name! No order to engage in the hate, but as you can see, it grew into this frenzy pitch. And what Orwell writes was that it was nearly impossible not to join in. You don't join in when you are an independent thinker, when you regard the truth as sacrosanct, when you have a moral core which is strong within you because you live your principles. You don't join in when you understand that you understand what's going on. You have sought the facts and the evidence and the truth. So we're in big trouble. There is no way to get the tyranny, the tide so high without destroying truth. And it's interesting that he is using that analogy, the water. Well, now the water is up uh, above my feet and now it's up above my knees and the the high tide just keeps rising when we have now hundreds of thousands who have been victims of weather weapons creating floods destroying homes businesses farms all over the place and when I talk to people about that here no one knows Oh, yeah, I heard there was some flooding in Nebraska. You go to Drudge Report, which is not uh, alternative. It's so mainstream. Over the months, over months, months, every single day, more and more Americans are being destroyed. Mainstream media... They have had a few reports about that, but a few. And they really focus on the big cities. But there are communities. Local news is certainly reporting on it. But if you're watching local news, then you're thinking that that's only happening to your community when it's happening to communities all over the country simultaneously. Well, that you don't know about because... Well, mainstream media is not doing its job to inform the people. So we have, we already have 
people being disappeared. And eventually, all of us will be disappeared. So is it our responsibility to do something? Yes. Yes, it is. And what you can do is get involved in your own community. It's not about going to events, collecting more and more information. We had plenty of information, plenty of knowledge a long, long time ago, years ago. And yet, we still have so many just sitting back doing nothing. Those who have already been destroyed get marginalized. You don't hear from them. We hear from the comfortable. Whether those are the woefully ignorant comfortable or the awake comfortable. And if you don't think that you are not going to get destroyed yourself, then I guess you have that invincibility. Well, how many Americans have said, I never thought it would happen to me? I can say that. I never thought it would happen to me. This tyranny is now. It's here and it's cementing itself. So it's you can disagree with me that it's not your responsibility to do something to fight against it. But I will say that you are one who has adopted moral relativism.